Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to install a surge arrestor. Here I've got three different surge arrestors and I'm going to demonstrate how to install this onto a DIN rail as well as a Samite rail. Now the first thing you might notice is this one has no indication. This is an old-fashioned one. If this is already operated, you can't tell that it has operated. This one here, the display will turn red and this one here is green showing you that it's working and if the light goes off, it means that it's already operated and now needs replacement. All right, just quick explanation of what this does. This is your regular sinusoidal waveform and what happens is at times there are these surges that come through on the waveform. And what the surge arrestor does, it is meant to cut that off and remove this from your electronic devices so that they are protected against such surges. Now in most cases, once these surge arrestors operate, they need to be replaced. Now if you're wondering why this is a problem for electronic devices, the first thing is a surge exceeds the maximum voltage that the appliance can handle. The next thing is, if you have a look at the rate of rise, if you can see how vertical that wave is, that has a high rate of rise, which we call DVDT, which means the voltage changes at a very high rate compared to the time, which means there's actually a lot of energy sitting here. Electronic devices do not like a transient such as this when the current or the voltage increases rapidly like that. It reduces the dielectric strength between the conductors. What that means is, if you've got two wires sitting next to each other, you might find that they arc. Say for example, you've got a little circuit board, this happens to be a Vero board, and if you look at the distance between these tracks, you can see it is very narrow, but when there is a surge, the current can actually jump across, creating an arc and also destroying the electronics. And that happens when one of these comes through the supply. All right, so how do you connect the SPD device? Well, if this is your live, you'll just grab a connection over there, there's your SPD, and it goes to earth, and here are your loads. So the SPD device is connected before the loads, preferably in your DB board. Now here's an older one, this is called a gap surge arrestor. So say for example, here is your live, and there comes a massive transient. Because the voltage is very high, it can actually jump, and there will be a current arc, and that will actually remove that transient. This is called a gap surge arrestor. There's a certain distance here that these terminals are connected and that when the voltage reaches a certain point the current can actually jump across. That is called a gap surge arrestor and you can actually use it over and over again. You often find these on power lines and at substations. All right just having a look at the gap surge arrestor you can see there's the one electrode or rod and here's the other electrode and this one is connected to earth you see here they've got it connected on a transformer tank the tank of the transformer is actually connected directly to the earth mat in the substation what happens is here is the supply wave coming in there's the live wire and then you see there's this uh, transient. When that transient is on this cable, because the voltage potential is very high, that is when we get that arc. It's just like a capacitive effect. And what happens is the gap between there and there is specifically calculated for the type of transient. And then what happens is it arcs to ground and then the uh, energy goes to the earth and dissipated through the earth. So here you can see one in real life. There you can see one. Uh, here's another example here on the measurement equipment. There you can see there's the gap arrestor. You see this side here is connected on the live and this one here goes straight to the chassis, the frame. And there you can see it's bolted down to the concrete. But underneath this gravel is actually an earth mat. And uh, that is earth, so that can dissipate the, the transient that is coming through. When it jumps across, it gets earthed and it's quenched. Now here's another example, you can see it here in this overhead uh, design. Now there is the gap arrestor and here's the live wire coming over there. And if there's a transient, then it can jump over there and be shorted down to earth through this frame. And just by the way, just have a look at that. This is what happens when equipment is not maintained. There is the earth side of the gap arrestor. And then look at that one. That one has shifted. Obviously a bird or something has bumped it. And uh, look at that gap. So now this is basically useless because the gap should have been uh, something like that. And now you can see the gap is increased. You see that's the gap and it's designed specifically for a certain voltage. And you're wondering what this is. These are often ceramic discs and why they're here is it provides a isolation from that side to that side and why it's got this funny shape is because voltage has this ability to creep if you've got a voltage potential sitting here what happens is the voltage has the ability to just gently creep here so you get a little bit of current here and 
it creeps along here. And by having these discs, you're actually increasing the surface area which the voltage has to creep. So as you can see, there's the one side and this is earth. And this happens to be live. Then this distance here is increased. As you can see, look at that distance is increased because of that curvature or those discs. Also, it helps with environmental conditions because if it rains or snows, you can see that you can't get the snow. The snow won't just uh, cover this thing like that, therefore reducing the isolation ability. So there's a lot of science that goes into the designs. It's not just a thumb suck, the length, the amount of discs, the material, uh, environmental conditions that goes into designing this. All right, so there's the gapped arrestor. And I've got this video here quickly, and I'm just going to show you. Um, here we're seeing an over-voltage condition. You can see that is this a persistent over-voltage. The voltage is too high and therefore is, the current is arcing and arcing and arcing. The point of the gap arrestor is to remove the surge. That is a fast transient, a fast peak of voltage. Here you're seeing a persistent arc and what is happening is the protection equipment is obviously not operating. This is not necessarily the point of the surge protection device. The surge protection device is to remove the surge, the fast pulse of additional energy. If you've got an over voltage condition that is persistent, then you need a different type of protection. As you can see here, this is a over voltage condition that is persisting. And here's another example. Uh, sometimes you've seen this on street poles. This is usually because of protection equipment which is not operating. Somewhere one of the settings is wrong and the protection equipment has not operated. So if you have a look here, here you can see an over voltage condition. Here is the correct voltage level. You can see that's at 100%. And what has happened is for some reason, the voltage has increased in amplitude. Look at that. And that is persisting, as you can see, in time. A surge, on the other hand, is a rapid rise in voltage. And while it is still an over-voltage condition, generally we talk about it being transient. Transient means it happens quickly and usually infrequently. Whereas if you look at the over-voltage condition, you can see that this is repetitive look at that that is a persistent over voltage condition you need a different type of protection to deal with this usually you just have to disconnect it all right so this is a gap surge arrestor i'm unsure if this is reusable so i cannot comment on that but this one over here is the most popular type nowadays it is the mov type all right so this is an example of what a mov looks like they don't all look like this these are the ones that you'll find in your electronic devices your tv maybe your hi-fi system and just having a look at the characteristic of the mov you'll see that at a certain threshold voltage, it suddenly conducts and allows current to flow. And have a look at that knee region. It is almost vertical after the knee region and how it allows the current to flow. Remember, this is a fast responding device. And you can get SPDs that are cartridge type. As you can see, once the SPD is operated, you can remove the cartridge and get just the cartridge, which makes it much easier in terms of the homeowner or the business owner who doesn't have to get an electrician. You can just pull out the old SPD cartridge and push in the new cartridge. Although if it did operate, it's always good to do an analysis of why it operated and just do a quick check to see if there is any resultant damage around your DB board. There are rules about how you connect this SPD, but some people believe that the SPD should also protect the earth leakage. So for some people, they'll prefer to install the SPD prior to the earth leakage to also protect the earth leakage. All right, so here I have a layout. There is the SPD and there's the earth leakage. This is a very old fashioned earth leakage, the way it looks. You might be more familiar with that type of earth leakage, which is more common. Right, so incoming console feed will come here. It goes into your earth leakage. There's the live, there's the neutral. And your SPD device would be connected there. You could cut a bus bar and join it like that, or you could put a jumper, make sure this is short. And then on the upper of the SPD, here's your ground wire, go straight to your ground rail, make sure this wire is really short, short as possible. Right, so here you see a three phase supply, phase one, two, and three. And each phase would then have to have its own surge protection device. So there you can already see there's a surge arrestor here. I've taken this one out. And then over here, I've got an old one. Unfortunately, this one has not got a display. So as I said, you wouldn't know if it has already operated. Try and change these for ones that have a display. All right, so this is a three-phase DB board. The reason why I chose this one is I want to show you how to install it if it was three-phase. All right, so first thing you can see is this is phase one, two, and three. And if you look at the top there, you might actually see there's already a surge arrestor installed. So there it is. There's the surge arrestor. And you can actually see the green LED is on, showing me that that surge arrestor is still in working condition. In your case, you might find that it's only a single phase in your main switch is here and you would trip it. But this is a three phase and here is the main switch. So it's important to switch off all supply coming to the DB board at this point. So now I'm going to trip this main switch, which will disconnect all three phases. 
Right, so I'm going to remove the cover. I've just unscrewed the holding screws on the top and I'm going to remove the cover. Right, so in this video I'm going to be changing this older type surge arrestor, the one without the display, to one that has a display. Now before I do that, I'm just going to explain to you the principle of the connections here. All right, if you have a look at the blue phase, you'll see there are two wires there. Although you can see three, there's two that are connected directly from the output of the mains breaker. And the one goes to that set of circuits and the other one is actually going to this earth leakage and the reason why it's separated like that is in some people's houses they prefer the lighting circuits to be directly connected to mains they're not protected by earth leakage because of a lot of nuisance tripping while the plugs must be connected via earth leakage so the live is coming there earth leakage round coming back and feeding to this group that is that bus bar over there is therefore being protected that bus bar there joins all of these plugs being protected by this earth leakage now if you have a look at this blue phase over there that is directly coming from the council supply and if you have a look at this row over here those bus bars you will see that those are directly connected to this main so if i trip this like that, you, there's still electricity sitting here on all these light circuits. I prefer to install the surge arrestor before the earth leakage, especially if you've got a setup like this where lights and plugs are separated. One is before earth leakage and one is after earth leakage. In this case, if I install the surge arrestor after earth leakage, I won't be protecting my plug. Therefore, in this case, I'd like it to protect both my plugs and lights, and that is why I'm gonna install it the way I'm doing it. Right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna remove this old one and replace it with the one with illumination. I'm just gonna remove this out of the way. So now you've gotta be careful because even if you trip this and it's in this row, it doesn't mean that that is offline. And that is one of the reasons why you must make sure you disconnected the supply completely. Right, and I'll prove it to you. Here I'm gonna put my one lead onto earth and over here I'm gonna put it onto this bus bar and you're gonna see at least 220 volts. All right, so 247 volts. Now I'm going to trip this and have a look here. You see it's still live. So even though I tripped the earth leakage, remember that some of the things are going through earth leakage, but some things are before the earth leakage. And that is why you must trip your mains breaker when doing this job. Now when I show you, you can see they're uh, less than one volt. So basically we're now clear to work. All right, so I'm removing the old one. There's a little clip at the bottom. There you can see. And I'll put the new one. Right, so there you can see the live bus bar is connected. And all I need to do is connect an earth wire. And the earth wire goes to the earth of your entire property. So this earth just gets connected to here. Make sure it's very tight. And now you can turn on. Right, so there you can see the surge protection device is now installed and operational. You can see it's telling you that it is operational. If I trip the mains, that light should go off and I'll demonstrate it to you. There you can see. So if the mains is off, that's off as well, which also tells you if your mains is offline. See now it's telling me mains is off. Right, now because it's a three phase supply, you'll need to put three of these surge protectors, one on each phase. Right, you can also get three phase surge arrestors. Here's one over here. You've got line one, line two, line three, and also on the neutral. Here's another example. Here an example of the CBI type two surge arrestors. And by the way, all of these are type two surge arrestors. Right, I just want to summarize the connection and also give you some guidelines in terms of some rules. Now having a look here, you can see the supply comes in there. It's currently down and there's my blue phase over here. Now there goes the one live right to there so this is on whether or not this earth leakage is up or down then you'll see there's another live wire and it just goes like that to my earth leakage and my earth leakage then feeds all the way around and there it comes to there in this case i wanted my surge protection device to protect not only my lights but also my plugs from surges and that is why i've connected in this orientation if all your circuits are connected after your earth leakage, then it's fine. You can put your surge protection device just after your earth leakage. But in my case, and which is quite common when there's nuisance tripping, 
Electricians separate the loads where the plugs and the lights are separate. The plugs in this case are these breakers here which are protected by the earth leakage while the lights unfortunately are not protected by earth leakage and are connected directly to the mains protected only by overcurrent protection as you can see the breakers. Now on the output of the SPD device, you've got to connect the earth cable. Now mine is an earth cable which I've already had there. I think there's a new standard which says this has to have the jacket on. Basically it should look like that. You can see there's the earth cable with the PVC around it. But what is important is the thickness of this copper. And there are standards about that. So please consult your local wiring guide. Please do not use less than 2.5 millimeters. And also make sure this copper wire that is running to your earth is as short as possible. And the reason being is if there is a surge, you don't want a unnecessary long cable to introduce inductance into your circuit, which in fact reduces the surge arrestor's ability to arrest the surge. And I'll get into that shortly. You want this earth cable as short as possible, and you also want this connection to be as short as possible. Now, if you have to connect this in a secondary DB board, a standalone DB board, which sometimes is the case, either there's not enough space or the surge protection device is not specified for your current DB board, then make sure you do not exceed about 50 centimeters. The point is, is that the surge protection device should be quite close or as close as possible to the incoming live wire. Now surge arresters are usually type tested and should be cleared to work in a certain DB box. If you want to be completely accurate make sure that the surge arresting device is specified for your DB box. So to sum up the connection can you see that this SPD device is actually connected in parallel with your loads and then the output goes straight to earth. If you have a look here the point of the surge arrester is to arrest that transient all the way to ground. So if you do not have a good ground connection in your property, then there's no point in the surge arresting. So it's very important that your earthing of the surge arrester is useful. And just on that note, as I said, if your, if your cables are too long to your surge arrester, it brings in its own inductance, the inductance of the wire because the cable's too long. So that's why I say keep those cables as short as possible. Right, here I have a small DIN rail DB board. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect it. I'm gonna trip the circuit breaker, then I'm gonna open this, and then I'm gonna show you how to install it in a DIN rail. Right, now I don't know if you recall, there was still some space here on the side, and that is where I intend to install my surge arrester. Right, so let's just understand what's happening here. There's the neutral rail, there's the earth rail, and the live coming in from an upstream DB board is here. There's the incoming live and neutral. So I want to protect this entire DB board, which means I need to connect my surge arrestor just next to this to the incoming live. Now let's just talk about voltages here. Right, you see when I put my meter here, there's no voltage here because it's tripped. So if I put my one lead there and my one lead here, you can see I'm getting nothing. However, if I put my leads here, look at that. I'm still getting a voltage, 249 volts, which is telling me that even though this is tripped and I try and install my, my surge protecting device on this side, I've got to be very careful because it's still live on the incoming feed. So how do you solve this problem? Well, in this case, you don't have to put the SPD device before the earth leakage if you have no way of switching off the incoming supply. If you've got no way of switching off the incoming supply, it's fine. Just connect your SPD device after earth leakage, which means you'll be connecting it over here, somewhere here. You could even put it over here on the edge. That's fine. In my case, I can go and switch this off. There's an upstream DB board, which I'll now go and trip so that the entire DB board is offline here. Now, if I show you, it should be off. There you go. Why is it off? Because I've just switched off the upstream DB board. All right, so since I'm installing it over there, I just need to cut away a bit of these blanks. All right, so I'm just using a pair of pliers and I'm going to gently bend this just like that. Now I just need to make some space here. Right, so there's a lip there. There's a wedge there and there's a clip and there's a sliding bracket there. So all I need to do is lean it in. As you can see, I lean it in. I make sure the wedge is over the rail and now all I need to do is press down and as you can see, it's already locked in place. Now all I need to do is wire it up. Right, so there's the earth wire running around there to the earth rail. So now all I need to do is jumper the live wire from here to here. 
Now, as you can see, the person who wired this before did not make use of the bus bars. Now, ideally, you should use bus bars. Now, right now, I don't have the DIN rail bus bar with me, so I'm just going to jumper it with a, a piece of wire like that. Right, so there the SPD device is now installed. I've linked it to the main incoming live wire, and on the output, it goes to earth. Right, now I can close the cover. Right, so the surge arrestor is now installed. I can turn this on. If there's a surge, that green will disappear. So everything on this side is now protected by the surge arrestor. 